Okay, this is kind of an unscripted walkthrough piston production. Um, I hadn't thought this through completely, so I've got some video that I've shot of them being drilled. Uh, these are two of the different pistons that I make. Uh, this is going to be a first valve. This is going to be a second valve. The material is Monel. Um, and I'll walk you through uh, the basics of how I put the holes in the tubes, how the liners go in to connect those holes, and then how the liners get opened up. And depending on the time of the video um, and how much is entailed, I may do the plugs, I may do the brazing, and I may also do the machining. I do all of that here in my shop. Um, I produce little liners, these little curved pieces. Um, it's 230 alloy red brass. Um, no other alloy really works well for this. You can try yellow brass, you can try copper, you could try nickel. None of them are going to function well. Uh, you're going to break liners, you're going to have an awful time if you ever get into the water of trying to do this. So what I use and what, what I was taught to use is 230 alloy red brass. It's really good against corrosion. It's really good for annealing. It's really good for brazing. And it's also very, very good for not expanding too quickly and ripping. So I'm gonna walk through how to install liners into these and how to connect the holes, but I need to adjust the camera. So it'll be a lot of editing. Okay, I'm gonna try and get a video of the Monel being drilled. I'm back here behind the, the rig. Um, it's going to bounce a little bit because the I've got it sitting on the same bench, so it's it's going to bounce a little. So. Okay. These first series of holes are just pilots. So the finished drill size can actually get in and make the cut I needed to make. The material is Monel. Well, that's not good. hole size I'm going to is half inch, 500 thousandths. Oil helps. It gets a little smoky. Monel is a very soft nickel alloy that is very difficult to work with. It wants to work hard and as soon as you start to cut it, at making a clean pass through the material so I have a half inch hole to work with. It's really important not to rush when you're trying to drill through Monel. If you start to push and you don't let the cutter work, You'll get some pretty terrible burrs that you have to clean up. That's inevitable. You're going to get that anyway. Come on, move a little bit. Bouncing all over the place. Again, sorry about the video bouncing. The 
chips coming off are insanely hot, so you get used to it. And that is a drilled pump. From this point, it needs to be deburred and degreased and cleaned before liners can be installed in it. This happens to be a number two, a second valve, a second piston. Okay, we're gonna do the first valve. And I'll walk through what I do to install liners and we'll see how it works. Incidentally, once these are drilled, I do sand the exterior of the part to remove the exterior burrs. I do run a reaming step on the inside to take care of the interior burrs. If you do not do that when you're building valves, you will likely have a liner that's gonna fail and it's gonna fail at that joint. It'll tear away because the burr is actually pushing through it during the balling process. So I'm gonna try and do this and talk through it at the same time in the fashion that I do it. I've got smooth sided jaws in my vise so and I don't over tighten it. Monel is really strange material. When you cut it with a cutting tool, it work hardens immediately. It's really difficult to work with. Um, but by itself, it's really soft. It's really easy to dent. So what I'm doing is I am installing the top tube in the first valve. And I'm just kind of walking it into position. And I'm using a set of needle nose pliers, but I'm not grabbing the outside of the tube. I'm not holding it like this. They're actually going inside. So it's got some control. I'm not trying to force it into position. Um, depending on the location of the part you're installing, there's a, lo a little bit of finesse. There's a lot of muscle memory that goes into this. It is by far the most frustrating thing in the world to try to do in this industry is to build pumps. It takes more time than anything else at all. Nothing is even close to this time crunch that you run into. Certain parts need to be squashed before you put them in or adjusted so that they actually fit. And sometimes they fall out. That's not that big a deal. It's always easiest to fix them at the beginning. Go back in there. First valves and tore are the easier of the valves to pump to put together. The first step is just getting everything installed. Some manufacturers will do one at a time and open one at a time. I think that's a waste of time. So when I'm doing them, I'm actually installing all three at once. That is the first step in building a pump. You've got these crazy long legs that stick out. From here, it goes in and it gets annealed with a torch and you're gonna bring these up and you're gonna get them pretty warm. And then you can start opening the ends of each tube. Again, I'm doing these in steps. So I'm gonna do some editing with the video. It's gonna be a little bit involved and probably longer than I want it to be. This is the second pump second piston. I keep calling them pumps. When I worked in the industry before, everybody in the other shop called them pumps. Um, it's irrelevant. They're pistons. And the, the difficult part of this is you're connecting two holes, one on this side and one on this side. And you want to find a curve, a radius that can fit between and go through, and then you can actually connect those two. It's not as easy as you would think. Um, so what I use to create these is actually, one second. It is this tool right here. And the crazy thing is that this is the steering column out of a 1957 Chevy. 
but it's got a worm gear on the end of it because those used to be mechanical steering linkages and it would have a ball bearing sleeve that would ride over this. When we'd go one way, it would turn to the left, the opposite direction, you would turn to the right. But the guide inside of this works really well when you're bending these tubes and it gives me just about the right size radius to actually get these parts in. Without that, without this little step of making these parts like this, this process is nearly impossible. So we need one to connect this port to this port. What I generally do is I'll crush the center. I'll deburr the outside if it needs it. And the leading edge, I make it almost square so it actually has a little bit more clearance. And as I'm going through, I'm just kind of starting to make that corner first. And I can't turn it all the way back to this direction. I can't pull this direction when I'm doing it. So I'm walking it directly in the direction that it's going in. So it wants to walk through the hole. If you try to twist it and torque it in the other direction, it will not go and it will just collapse. That's as much as you can get done with it at that point. Um, during the building process, there is a fair amount of trimming of these, these liners. They're called liners, these tubes that go in that connect the holes together. So let me find one more. And I don't care that these are dirty right now and a little bit messy looking. That's very much irrelevant. I put it in and I turn it so that it kind of locks it in place. And then I'm going to take this one and the first, and I'm going to go ahead and anneal it. I'm going to skip the annealing process. It's just like annealing anything else except these when you anneal it. You want to get them nice and orange, but you don't want to go past that to a yellow stage. You want to just get them warm enough so that they're actually soft. Okay, my normal annealing I do with the lights off. If I can do one quickly with just a hand torch to show you what it looks like. I'm just going to anneal each tube. And I'm really only worried about getting the ends of the tubes right now. I'm not trying to heat the whole inside of the tube up. Be careful, I'll melt my phone. So I'm working from one side to the opposite side. So that they just start to turn orange. I do not want them to be bright orange. Then I move to the next tube. There's a reason for this, and I'll explain it in a second. When you're doing the initial annealing, you're just trying to soften the sides of the tube so that you can get the tooling into there to open it up. Again, I don't normally work with a small torch. But in this case, it serves a purpose. So I'm going to clean these off. All right, I'm going to attempt to do this with the camera rolling and try to get some of these to start to open. I always do the middle port first. These outside liners, this liner and this liner, are always easier to keep in place than the center one. The center always wants to come out. You can see it's really loose. So what I'm doing is I reach in with just a steel rod and I hold some lateral pressure against it and I'm just starting to flower open the outside of the tube and I'm not trying to move it too much. Part of making pistons is being, well, patient. You cannot do everything at once. There's no way to do that. Um, but what I've got when I'm done is hopefully a hole that is too large to pass through the center of the, the Monel again. It keeps it in place. It flowers it open. So what I'm going to do is I work around the entire piston to do that same thing. Again, I'm not over tightening the vise. Monel is, again, it's really touchy material. You can actually ruin it by trying to move it too much. And if you squeeze too hard with the vise, you will wreck the part. You'll collapse the holes. The grease you see is just lanolin. 
And again, I'm not trying to move the material too much too fast. I'm just working my way around each of these sides and just starting to open it up. And trying to work with the camera, which is interesting. This is step one, obviously, in, in the actual process of opening these things up. This port is always a little bit easier to work with. Usually, not always. And you want to be flexible with your tools and you want to take your time. If you start to rush, you will absolutely drive yourself crazy because these things can be so temperamental. And you would like to think they would all functionally act the same. They don't. My big old hand sticking in the way. Sorry about that. Okay, so this is step one in terms of opening a piston and opening the liners. Um, from this point, I transition from using straight rods. Let me try to adjust the camera. I'm gonna be behind the camera for this part. Here's the number two piston that I showed earlier. And here's the number one after the first opening step. And all I've done is I just started to pull open the ends of each tube to keep it from passing through the Monel completely. Um, there's no guarantee that that's gonna actually do that. So you may have some liners fail at that point. Um, from that standpoint, I move on from straight rods that look like this to rods with ball bearing ends. I'll show you what those look like. They are just like this. So it's got a shaft and it's got a ball on the end. And I make those here in the shop. Um, so I'll start opening it up dimensionally. I'm gonna remember I'm holding the camera and getting these liners actually open to the size. Okay, I'm starting with the balling of each of these liners. Um, this is a steel rod. It's got a specifically sized ball on the head of it. And what I'm watching as I'm starting to go through is I just want to get it past the halfway point so I can see in this side and I'm coming through the back side. It's hard to do this with the camera on. I normally don't try to video this because it takes so long to actually set up and it can be problematic in getting these things done. So all I'm doing is making the inside of it a little bit larger now. I haven't done any annealing since the initial annealing where I just opened each of the tubes. This is just starting to open the inside. I use a leather mallet and just a simple small ball on the end of a, a rod. And you have to make sure you use some grease. Without grease, it's not going to go through. It's going to bind. And you have to know when to stop. So what I'm watching is just the outside of the, the liner so I don't try to drive it through. And I'm gonna follow the contour of what the shape is dictating from the curve. There'll be a natural progression where the ball's gonna find its way through and you wanna allow it to do that. That's the reason I'm starting with a leather mallet and not trying to force it by hand through there. Um, you can manipulate it to a certain point, but you can also punch it right through the back of the liner if you're not careful. And this initial opening step is really critical because it establishes the tube to start to open and it dictates the rest of the opening process. It's hard to see if I can get a little bit of a view in there. Can't really see the camera. 
but it's now the bore size of whatever this mandrel is. I go around the entire pump and I do this to each of the liners. Um, I do that before I do any more annealing or any more cleaning or anything. And again, I'm just trying to go halfway through, meaning halfway along the length of this. Once I pass the center point, I stop going. This takes a long time to get used to doing. It is not something everybody's good at. It can be massively frustrating. So it's important when you do this that you are in a decent frame of mind. If you come into this and you're in a bad mood, don't try to make pistons. It's not a good day to do that. Okay, the first two balling steps are now done. The liners are still really loose. You can you can hear it kind of rattling around. Um, each incremental step that I go larger and expanding and opening the bore of each of these interior tubes, these connecting tubes, um, I'm not moving more than about 15 thousandths per inch of movement. If you try to expand it faster than that, it's going to split a liner. It's not worth attempting it. So you do the initial annealing to start to open up the outsides. Once you get that little established flare working so that it can't pass through and fall through, then you start to open the inside of each tube. But I have not annealed it again yet. Um, now at, at this point I will go back and I will re-anneal it. And this time I'm looking for a little bit of a more of an orange color through the entire tube because I'm working the entire tube. I do not want it to get too soft, obviously, because it can still push the liner through the hole and then you start over again. And that's maddening if you have never done this. So I'm going to anneal these and then I'll be right back. Okay, the annealing is complete for the second step. We're going to go two more sizes to open these up. I don't really worry about the interior carbon. You're going to get a lot of carbon buildup because it's it's got a high copper content, and it loves to have carbon up here on the outside and on the, on the inside of the tube. Um, if these were finished sized steps I was doing to establish an actual bore size, then I would go through it, clean it, get all the carbon removed. But right now it's just rough opening and getting them into the position to have that step happen. So for now, that's what's up. I'm gonna open these up two more steps and keep moving. You want to make sure when you do this that you do not over tighten your voice. I've already said that a bunch of times. I'm going to repeat it again. As you anneal these, each time you anneal it, this Monel tube is getting softer and softer and softer and can be more subject to having collapse. I mean, you won't really notice it when it happens until you're machining it at the end. And it'll have this wobbly effect on the lathe or if you send it off and have it centerless ground they're going to call you and say hey there's something wrong with your tube so you just make sure you don't over tighten the vise if the part moves in the vise that's okay you can just retighten it a little bit tighter but just something to keep in mind i'll just let it play sometimes i use oil sometimes i use uh lanolin but I'm being very careful to watch the outside leading edge or trailing edge in this case of the tube I do not want it to push through so normally I would move it but I'll just do it from this side no 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 sometimes they want to move so When they want to move, you have to figure out creative ways to hold on to the tubes so that they don't move. If you've only got two hands, well... And each time I'm taking it out, I just do this. I take it and I'll run around in circles. 
to reestablish that outside edge, the opening of that. So at the end, when these are done, do I have any on the bench? They look like I have a couple laying here somewhere. They look more like this, where you got these giant openings. And this is actually one that failed and it's beyond repair. So it's now just sitting on the bench collecting dust. That does happen, unfortunately. You want to make sure each of these balls goes through at least halfway past the point where you've already opened it. If they don't, take your time, go back and do it again. If you don't pay attention to that spot or that that part and you just skip it when you go to the next larger size tube you're going to have the inside of the tube will have an actual venturi and you won't get past it i'm just going to move it so i can actually see what side i'm working on They will eventually move. Sometimes they can be stubborn. This center liner is always the easiest to install and it's always the worst one to open, which doesn't make any sense, but that's the way it goes. A little bit more over there. The reason these are done with a ball on the end of a, of a slender rod is so that the ball can actually move and you can move the direction of, of entry and passage. And you can always look in to the inside of the tube and you can see whether or not you've actually passed that halfway point. And if you haven't, you have to go back and catch it. You have to get it correct now while you actually have a chance to do this. my hands are in the way but it's okay all right it's actually Halloween here in the States today so my kids are in school And they're a little older now, so it's not quite as cool as it used to be, but that's life. Okay, let's stop that. Okay, the initial four opening steps are done. I've got two steps, basically, that are left. I'm going to open it to 437 to 7 sixteenths. And then to the bore size, whether that's 450, 54, 58, whatever that's going to end up being. Um, I wasn't going to show this, but I'll show this. You don't want to hammer the last steps open. Um, really to get a nice smooth finish on the inside of the piston and the inside of the liner, um, you want to be able to spin it as you're going. So what I use in lieu of a, a giant drill press or anything dedicated to do this, is a hammer drill with the bearing on it. And you can go through and you can open each side and it takes very little time to do it. 
and you can use your whole frame to do it. And you can work your way around a pump pretty quickly. It doesn't take a lot of effort. It doesn't take a lot of force to do this. Um, the annealing steps are obviously there for a reason, so... And you can hear the, the in sound of the hammer actually impact on the inside. And what it's doing is just kind of bumping its way through. And that's how I start to do pistons. So from here, there'll be a finished ball size, whatever this is going to end up being. I actually don't want to finish this for a bore size because I don't have anything it's going into yet. So what I'm going to do is clean it and mark it and shelve it. But that's how I build pistons as far as the liners are concerned. Um, from there, I may extend this video. I may do a second video showing the plugs that go into the bottom of the top, the spring barrel, the machining steps, the annealing, the brazing. There's a lot of steps in making a piston. But for now, this is how pistons are made in my shop. I can go through the rest in a second video or this is just going to take forever to do. So I think that's as much as I want to do with this now and I just have to edit it and wait for my computer to actually upload it. So thanks for watching. If you have questions, email them in. That's cool. I'm, I'm more than happy to answer questions. Um, and I may do a small addendum to this, but for now, thanks. Benchmark Trumpets.